Hello everybody, Cole here, and welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! Engineering, where we look at various engines, their capabilities, and what decks they can be used most efficiently. Today is, is a very special day, mostly due to the fact that the engine we're talking about is not yet released in the TCG, and is also from a series of cards near and dear to an acquaintance, I guess? Any. To any Eevee. Shout out to her and I hope she won't hurt me too much for this one. The Noble Knights are an arch type of light, dark and fire monsters, first introduced in Galactic Overlord or the way back in May 2012. It was only one card at the time and further support came out down the line. The Archetype's high point in the metagame came after the release of Rise of the Duelist in August 2020 and the introduction of the Infern Noble Knights. The deck has since fallen out of the metagame, but it's still able to produce results in hands of a skilled pilot as seen in one of the latest extravaganzas. However, we're not here to talk about the history of Noble Knights, and that's a topic within of itself. We're here to talk about the yet unreleased Noble Knight engine. The cards that make it were released in Asia as part of the Animation Chronicle 2012 in June this year, and the scheduled release for the TCG is for December as part of the Brothers of Legends booster set. The basis of the engine is made out of free cards, but ability to play other cards to search out engine cards for additional consistency is available. We're going to start with the main engine card, the horse. Look at my horse, my horse is amazing. It searches out the main deck part of the engine, and it can proceed to bring out the extra deck one. Funnily enough, it can summon various fusion monsters as well, meaning it can also be used in an additional form of fusion summon for other decks. Spearholder is the other main deck part of the engine. When summoned, it can change a monster to Flua Synchron and also make it a tuner, giving either a Hulky Firebreak play or a Synchro play. This level 6 Beast Warrior Fusion is the main one summoned with Horse's effect. That's due to the fact that it can special summon a level 2 or a lower monster from your hand or graveyard. Additionally, if you use a material for a Wind Warrior Synchro monster, it allows you to blow up one face-up monster on the field. That's a very interesting effect, but at this point in time there are three level 7 or higher Synchro monsters that fulfill this criteria. There might be more created in the future, giving the engine additional flexibility, but that's all on Konami's side. So now let's look on some additional cards that you can use to provide additional consistency for the engine. The Shield Better is one of those cards. It can highly boost the consistency of the engine since it can search the starter, the horse. This is another consistency booster since it can search out shield bearer giving the player additional way to access the horse, and may extend the entirety of the engine. On its own, the engine, due to its nature, can either provide a Hulky Fibrax play or a Synchro one, as I mentioned previously. On its own, it can give the player access to a level 8 Synchro monster, and with any additional support, an even higher synchro. It all depends on the deck it's used in. There's no data regarding the Noble Knight engine from the OCG and since the engine is unreleased in the TCG, I'll just have to go with what I'm usually using. It's not optimized, so of course feel free to experiment, therefore I present to you with this. Okay, so let me explain why I do it like this. The three of Siphon cards self-explanatory since each copy of Shield Bear gives a player access to horse and each copy of Heritage gives access to shield better. That makes the engine highly consistent since about 20% of the deck starts the engine going. One way or another, there's actually no need to play more than one spear holder since once the first one is searched out and used as fusion material for center mina, horse can be used to search out shield bearer giving the player access to additional horse. You can of course play more spear holders, but I think that would be more of a brick fest than is desirable, mostly due to the fact that center mina can revive that single copy of spear holder so any more would be kind of pointless. The easy access to high level synchro monsters is the greatest advantage this engine can provide. Getting powerhouses like Borlod Savage Dragon, Chaos Ruler the Chaotic Demonic Dragon, Draco Berserker of the Tenny and more makes the engine a force to be reckoned with. There's also the engine's consistency which is very high and can be even higher in certain decks. The engine's biggest issue is its size with 7 cards minimum and 10 maximum in the main deck alone. That makes deck building rather limited 
limited, especially when 25% of your deck is simply a level 8 synchro engine. And don't get me started on the extra deck space, but at least two spaces dedicated to Centaur Mina and even more to the level 8 synchros you want to summon. I wouldn't be surprised if about one third of the extra deck would have to be dedicated to this engine alone. When it comes to the usage, the engine doesn't lock the player into any specific type, attribute or summoning mechanic, making it rather flexible, at least on that front. With the size and typing, I would suggest testing out in a Chaos deck, mostly due to the fact that all the engine pieces, except horse, are light, making it an interesting addition to the dark part of Chaos. And with that, we're going to wrap up. I hope you enjoyed this little video and somewhat of a prediction on my part. Maybe this got you even more excited for the December's Brother of Legends set. I would also like to remind you to like, comment and subscribe if you find this type of content enjoyable. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Chocolo signing out. Peace!